Throughout the Second World War, one of the most dangerous jobs for someone to undertake was being a spy. Spies were often dealt with brutally and Hitler would sentence those to death having some executed on the guillotine or being shot by a firing squad. Spies were pivotal for a country to get one over their enemies, however if caught they were subjected to torture and a horrific ordeal. The Americans in 1942 captured a number of German spies who had been involved in Operation Pastorius, a failed intelligence plan to sabotage within America during World War II. But this plan did not go well, and because of this a number of people went to their deaths, but a few were executed on the electric chair. Join us today as we look at the execution of Richard Quirin, a man who was one of eight agents involved in the German intelligence operation. Join us today as we look at the execution of the German spy sent to the electric chair, and remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Richard Quirin was born on the 26th of April 1908 and he was born in Berlin. But then in 1927 he moved to America and he lived in the state of New York. During his life he worked as a mechanic for the company General Electric, but he lived in America for 12 years until 1939. He was a man who was invested in the politics of his homeland and he was captivated by the rise of Hitler and Nazism. And whilst he was in America he even joined the German-American Bund, a Nazi spin-off group that held an infamous rally at Madison Square Garden. But then in 1939 Quirin returned home to Germany with his wife, and he took a job with Volkswagen. He worked in a plant at Braunschweig, but he was then recruited by the publisher of an Nazi newspaper for a mission which became known as Operation Pastorius. Following the attack on Pearl Harbor and the German declaration of war on America, Hitler had given authorization for a mission to sabotage the American war effort and to attack civilian targets within the country. The Abwehr were given the mission and there were a number of Germans who were recruited for it. Eight men were picked, and two of them were American citizens, but Richard Quirin was seen as an experienced man who had worked in America. He was recruited into the Abwehr and was given three weeks of sabotage training near to Berlin. He was schooled in how to make and detonate explosives, and also how to make timers for bombs. He was given a new backstory, and was told to improve his English and to not attract attention. The mission was to sabotage and hit American economic targets, including hydroelectric plants at Niagara Falls, plants that made metal objects, and many more places including railroad passes. The agents were to spread terror, and they would plant bombs on bridges, train stations, and in public places, and they were given everything they needed. They were then put onto two U-boats, which would land on the east coast and drop them off. Quirin was given the identity Richard Quintas, who was said to have been a Portuguese man, and he was said to have been a cool but cruel man who would not hesitate to kill anyone to accomplish the mission's objective. On the 13th of June 1942, he was one of the first four to go to America and landed on American soil on a U-boat. However, George John Dash, another conspirator, would turn himself into the FBI, and then Quirin was named as one of the conspirators, and a week later, he was the first who was arrested and as he tried to run, the FBI surrounded him and took him into custody. Dash had told another conspirator that he had no intention of going through with the mission, and that he hated Nazism, and he planned to bring down the whole objective. But Richard Quirin was then taken to trial, and when he was placed on the stand, he stated he did not know the true purpose behind Operation Pastorius, and he said that he had just used this as a way of getting back to America but it was then discovered that he was in fact a devout and loyal Nazi, and that he willingly participated with training and with the operation. If it would have succeeded without doubt, Quirin would have killed a number of civilians and caused severe problems within America, but he was then for his work as a spy sentenced to death, and when the death sentence was announced, he stood emotionless. The only fight he showed was when he wanted to let the Nazis back in Germany know that it was Dash who had defected, and had given over information to the FBI. Before his execution, Richard Quirin wrote to his wife and daughter and he said, These are the last lines I can write to you. I should like to tell you that I've always loved you, and that I came here to make a better life for you, my dear ones. But unfortunately, God willed it otherwise. Tell Kappa, or one of his people, that George Dash and Peter Berger betrayed us. Begin a new life and think of me often but he was sentenced to death to die by the electric chair 
an execution method which became notorious in its use in America. On the 8th of August 1942, inside of D.C. jail in Washington, D.C., Quirin was taken from his cell into the execution chamber. There were a number of witnesses who were there to see his execution, and he was brought in and was secured to the electric chair through belts which were wrapped around him. Then the probes were attached to him that would carry the deadly current. Within minutes of entering the execution chamber, the electricity was turned on, and quickly Richard Quirin, the Nazi spy, was executed. Following his death, his remains were then buried in a potter's field in a pauper's grave. The failing of Operation Pastorius caused Hitler to fly into a rage to the head of the Abwehr Wilhelm Canaris, and no other sabotage attempts were made on American soil. Clemency was given to Dash after the war, and he was then sent back to the American occupation zone in Germany, but in Germany he was considered a traitor who had caused the death of Quirin and the other conspirators. Richard Quirin was a man who was an ardent Nazi, and he joined the Nazi factions when he lived in America, but when the war broke out he would return home, and would do what he could to help the Germans. He was executed as a spy and as a saboteur, and the Americans sought to administer swift and brutal justice onto those who were Nazi spies working on American soil. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.